So in our discussion about the Helicobacter pylori infection treatment, we will cover topics including the treatment regimens for H. pylori and the dosing for these regimens and also how to choose a treatment regimen and what to do if the treatment regimen fails and who should receive the H. pylori treatment. So according to the American College of Gastroenterology, the ACG, we have multiple treatment regimens for H. pylori infection that will be explained in the next slides. So we have the clarithromycin triple therapy, we have the bismuth quadruple therapy, and we also have the concomitant and the sequential therapy, and then we have the hybrid therapy, the levofloxacine triple therapy, and the fluoroquinolone sequential therapy, and we also have the rifabutin triple therapy. So let's begin with the clarithromycin triple therapy. So this is a 14-day regimen and it consists of three medications, hence the name triple, and this is a standard or double the standard dose twice a day. And I will explain the proton pump inhibitor standard dose in the next slide. Now this regimen also contains the clarithromycin, which is on 500 mg twice a day. And then we have the amoxicillin, which is 1 gram twice a day. Or we have the metronidazole, 500 mg three times a day. And this regimen is the treatment of choice if the H. pylori strain is susceptible to clarithromycin and metronidazole at the same time. And for the patient to receive this regimen, they should have no previous history of macrolide exposure for any reason. Because if they have exposure to macrolide, this means that they may have a macrolide resistance and this means that the clarithromycin would not work on these patients. So if they have previous macrolide exposure, we don't give them the clarithromycin triple therapy. Now let's talk about the proton pump inhibitor standard dose. So for the omeprazole, we have the standard dose as 20 mg. For the ismoprazole, it's 20 mg also. For the lansoprazole, it's 30 mg and for the ribeprazole is 20 milligrams. So when we say standard dose, it means this dose, and when we say double the standard dose, it means the standard dose multiplied by two. So for the omoprazole, the double standard dose is 40 milligrams. Now the proton pump inhibitors are available in all the Helicobacter pylori treatment regimens because they help suppressing the gastric acid and the gastric acid is very important for the survival of the H. pylori. So once we have less gastric acid, the H. pylori would be weaker and also the antibiotics become more efficacious in alkaline pH and alkaline pH that resulted from the proton pump inhibitor action help in increasing the penetration of the antibiotics through gastric mucus, reaching the Helicobacter pylori inside the gastric mucus. Now let's talk about the bismuth quadruple therapy. So this is a 10 to 14 day regimen and it consists of four medications hence the name quadruple. So we have a proton pump inhibitor, which is the standard dose twice a day. And then we have the bismuth subsalicylate for 300 milligrams twice a day. 
and then we have the amoxicillin which is used in children younger than eight years old and it is one gram twice a day or we can use the tetracycline which is in children older than eight and in adults for 500 milligrams four times a day now it is important to understand that the tetracycline cannot be used in children younger than eight years old because it affects cartilage and bone growth so it would lead to deformities in those children so it is restricted to children older than eight and adults now the fourth medication in this regimen is the nitroimidazole and by the nitroimidazole we mean either ametronidazole or tinidazole which is on dose of 500 milligrams twice a day now the bismuth quadruple therapy is used when resistance to both clarithromycin or metronidazole is not known and it is used in patients with any previous macrolide exposure or in patients who are allergic to penicillin and they are older than eight years old because we will give them the tetracycline instead of the penicillin now macrolide means the medications like erythromycin clarithromycin amikacin azithromycin and others so if the patient is exposed to any of these medications the bismuth quadruple therapy is preferred for them the other regimen we have is the concomitant therapy and this is a 10 to 14 day regimen and it consists of a proton pump inhibitor which is the standard dose twice a day and then we have the clarithromycin which is 500 milligrams twice a day and then we have the amoxicillin on one gram twice a day and the fourth medication is the nitroimidazole which is either ametronidazole or tinidazole on 500 milligrams twice a day now we also have the sequential therapy and this is a 10 to 14 day regimen and it consists of a proton pump inhibitor with amoxicillin for five to seven days and the doses are mentioned here followed by a proton pump inhibitor nitroimidazole which is either metronidazole or tinidazole and a clarithromycin twice a day for five to seven days so for the first five days we use a proton pump inhibitor and amoxicillin and for the five days following that we use a proton pump inhibitor nitroimidazole and clarithromycin now the sequential therapy should not be given if the strain is resistant to metronidazole or clarithromycin now after that we have the hybrid therapy and this is a 10 to 14 day regimen and it consists of a proton pump inhibitor amoxicillin for seven days followed by a proton pump inhibitor amoxicillin clarithromycin and nitroimidazole for seven days now we also have the levofloxacin triple therapy and this is a 10 to 14 day regimen and it consists of a proton pump inhibitor a levofloxacin which is on 500 milligrams once a day and then we have the amoxicillin now after that we have the fluoroquinolone sequential therapy and this is a 10 to 14 day regimen and it consists of a proton pump inhibitor and amoxicillin for five to seven days followed by a proton pump inhibitor a fluoroquinolone like a levofloxacin 500 milligrams once a day and a nitroimidazole and this is also for five to seven days and we also have the rifabutin triple therapy 
and this is a 10-day regimen suggested as a salvage treatment if the first line treatment fails and it consists of three medications hence the name triple so we have a proton pump inhibitor we have amoxicillin and then we have a rifabutin for 300 milligrams once a day now we also have a treatment regimen called load and load consists of four medications we have the levofloxacin 350 milligrams once a day and then we have a proton pump inhibitor double the standard dose and we have an itazoxanide 500 milligrams twice a day and we have doxycycline 100 milligrams once a day now let's talk about on how to choose a first line regimen for a patient who is receiving the helicobacter pylori treatment for the first time so choosing a regimen depends on the patient previous antibiotic exposures and if the patient has penicillin allergy or no and the best regimen for a specific patient is the regimen that the patient had minimal exposure to its antibiotics and also if the patient has penicillin allergy we should not give them the regimens with penicillin and this is a more detailed diagram on how to select a first line H pylori treatment regimen so first we identify if the patient has penicillin allergy and also if they have a previous macrolide exposure for any reason and those are the recommended regimens if the patient has no penicillin allergy and they have no macrolide exposure and those are the regimens for patient with no penicillin allergy but they have macrolide exposure and those are the regimens for patient who who does have penicillin allergy and they don't have macrolide exposure and finally the bismuth quadruple therapy is recommended for patients with penicillin allergy and macrolide exposure now let's talk about what to do if the first line treatment fails now after the first line treatment regimen is done we do some testing to prove eradication of the H. pylori and this is done by either urea breath test or fecal antigen test or biopsy based testing at least four weeks after completion of therapy and if positive result from these tests then this means that the treatment is failed now when the treatment is failed then bismuth quadruple therapy or levofloxacin therapy is the preferred treatment option for patients receiving a failed clarithromycin containing treatment first while clarithromycin or levofloxacin containing treatment are preferred if the patient received a failed bismuth quadruple therapy first and this is a very simplified version of what to do when treatment fails because here we have a much more detailed version on what to do if treatment fails so if we done testing and we find out that the patient still have persistent H. pylori infection then we classify them into two classes and those are the patients who received clarithromycin triple therapy first and it failed or the patients who received the bismuth quadruple therapy first and it failed and then we furtherly classify them into patients who are negative quinolone means they have no exposure to quinolones before and we classify them into negative penicillin allergy so those are patients who doesn't have penicillin allergy and then we also have positive quinolone means they have a previous quinolone exposure and then we also have a positive penicillin allergy which means patients who have penicillin allergy and then all the possibilities are taken 
on each side and options for treatment are mentioned after. So if the patient have negative quinolone exposure and negative penicillin allergy and they already tried clarithromycin triple therapy, then we have the bismuth quadruple, the levofloxacin triple, the rifabutin, and the high dose dual, all options for treatment. Now the high dose dual means we give the patient a proton pump inhibitor and amoxicillin in high doses. And this is also a treatment regimen. And as you can see, they give you all the possibilities and they give you the possible treatment for each of them. And this is here, the salvage therapies for H. pylori doses. So the doses are different if the patient received the first line treatment and the first line treatment failed. And those are the doses here. You can pause the video and read the doses. Now, who should receive the H. pylori treatment? And the answer for that is that all the patient tested positive for Helicobacter pylori active infection should receive H. pylori treatment. Now, who are the patients who need testing for H. pylori? Means, what are the indications for H. pylori testing? So, all the active peptic ulcer disease patients and patients with a history of peptic ulcer disease require H. pylori testing. Also, the mild lymphoma patients require testing and patients with a history of endoscopic resection of early gastric cancer and patients with uninvestigated dyspepsia and the gastroesophageal reflux disease patients also require testing for H. pylori and we have patients taking long-term low-dose aspirin because aspirin lead to ulceration so testing the H. pylori to make sure the patient have no H. pylori because if they taking aspirin and they have H. pylori then their risk for developing ulcer is much higher. Now also patients on non-steroid anti-inflammatory drugs also require testing and patients with unexplained iron deficiency anemia because those patients might have an ulcer and they are bleeding from there so they have to be tested for H. pylori and also the adults with immune thrombocytopenic purpura also require testing for H. pylori and finally let's talk about an important note so the proton pump inhibitors the ismoprazole and the ribeprazole are preferred to be used in Asian and Caucasian population because the other options like the omprazole are rapidly metabolized in these patients due to these patients having a cytochrome B452C19 polymorphism. And with that, we reach the end of this video. Thank you guys for watching. Please give us a like, comment your ideas and questions, and subscribe.